Well, th there have been sort of 49 milestones so far, which is, you know, the annual and the awards, and, and it's a record of the best work from around the world. Well, I say from around the world. In the last 10 to 15 years, it's been around the world. Before that, perhaps 15 years back, uh, DNA Day was more about British work than, than it was, but now it's truly global. Um, there have been some important uh, ups and downs, shall we say, in history as well. Uh, there have been some uh, financial, financial challenges along the way. Uh, and I'm happy to say now, largely through uh, the efforts of Dara Lynch, who's the COO of DNAD, we're in a good place financially. And that's important because actually uh, what we are is an educational charity with a huge prestigious awards show attached to it. But that's how we fund our educational activities. There are lots of things that are special um, about the 50th anniversary. There are new categories and you've caught me out because I, I, I can't tell you exactly which ones they are, but uh, there are 25 or 26 jurors uh, and some of those uh, juries, I beg your pardon, and about 195 jury members. Uh, and some of those juries make more than one award you know so music videos would do the best music video and the best kind of and they give some craft awards there as well so there are many I can't even tell you how many actual uh, awards we could give potentially uh, last year there were there were about 550 pieces of work get into the annual of them a couple of hundred are nominated for a pencil and I think last year there were 55 yellow pencils and five black pencils so it's incredibly hard <laughs> To win a pencil, but it's important that that standard be, you know, kept where it is because it's a record of the best work. The NAD had to go, go global because the business is globalised. Um, but also, you can't claim to be, you know, a record of the best creative work in, in business communication around the world if you don't go global because the best work is is coming from lots and lots of different places. So D D DNAD to truly serve the global creative community, which is, you know, part of what we're about, uh, is very interested in, in expanding into creative centres, great creative cities around the world. Uh, uh, Sao Paulo would be quite high on that list because it's got such a vibrant advertising and design um, uh, uh, business, business there. Uh, and Mumbai would certainly be up there in terms of our list of priorities. So I, I would like us, I would like DNAD uh, to be, to have a physical presence in at least two creative centres outside the UK in the next 12 to 18 months. Um, uh, and I think Sao Paulo will be one of those and I'm, I'm not sure what the second will be. And th the reason for us going uh, is, is to kind of, you know, plant the DNAD flag, to do what we do, which is to nurture excellence, particularly in creative education, but in in, in, in uh, creative excellence in business communication generally, to raise our membership, uh, to get more awards entries uh, in, into the professional uh, competition, uh, and to offer professional development to the industry, and also to clients actually, to help them partner better with their, with their creative partners. I, I think you have to bear in mind that the juries are composed of very, very senior creative directors who are used, for the most part, uh, to judging work from outside their country of origin, if you like. Many of them have international uh, roles, but it's not perfect. I can't pretend to you that there's a perfect solution to that. You know, I think everyone here is aware of it, and therefore people aim off for it and will ask if there's, if there's stuff they're not getting. But they may not get that they're not getting it, so then they wouldn't ask. <laughs> At the heart of DNAD is an assumption that the good stuff works better than the bad stuff and the average stuff. So we, we, it's not our job to set out to prove that. There are lots and lots of award shows, you know, IPA effectiveness and so on, that meticulously prove effectiveness in, in, in marketing communications. Our belief is that if you do good stuff, it works better than the stuff that's not as good. And, and therefore that's what we stimulate, award, reward. Uh, and uh, as I say, we, we leave that you know, the burden of proof to other, peop to other people. I can't tell you how much I hate scams uh, because it's not what our industry is about. Uh, and it kind of sucks the lifeblood out of it and makes it, um, it, it, it sort of makes it a bit illegitimate. So I really don't like it. And when I was running agencies that we actively campaigned against it, stopped it. However, <laughs> I mean, there are some things that are scam 
and they're obviously scam because they're not for a real client or they didn't run or they weren't paid for by the client and they're inventions. That's not, that's not advertising. Uh, there's some stuff that obviously did run because we saw it on television or in a newspaper or, and that's kind of, it's the grey area in the middle where people have, if you like, had an idea, attached it to a client, it is legitimate, uh, you know, it did run, you can prove it with a transmission certificate or, you know, a voucher copy. Uh, but it's not quite clear who paid for it. And it's, in the end, do, do you know what? Uh, uh, that stuff is real because it happened, uh, and it's real because it's been entered, and because all our awards money goes into creative education, I'll take the entry fee. But it, to be serious about it, it's a real issue for our, for our business, and it, it happens everywhere. It's not just South America and Asia where, where it happens. You know, you know, UK agencies are guilty of it as well. I think it's something we'll have to address, actually, at some point. I think the awards industry will have to get its head around it. But it's a big problem.